What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and this is the Legends Pinball. This was sent to me by At Games. This Legends Pinball was once a customer's pinball machine, but it came to him damaged, not working. So they emailed me and asked me if I wanted to repair it to make a video. Now of course I said yes. So they sent it to me and I got this damaged virtual pinball machine to repair. Hopefully we're gonna troubleshoot and repair it in this video. I don't have the back box because the customer had the back box, it was working condition. But technically we can play pinball on the Legends Pinball with the bottom half. We just don't have the back box for the second display and also for the audio. So I'm not gonna have audio when I do my test, so keep that in mind. So they emailed me what was going on. So I know a little bit about this, but I don't know everything about what's going on. So until I plug it in and find out for myself. But it was even more damaged when it shipped to me. And the box was kind of like messed up looking. Like, let me go ahead and show you. See right here? The box split right here. And the legs were laying loose inside the box, scraping up the pinball machine on top. And because the box was mishandled, it looks like this top piece was damaged. Uh, it looks like it's some dent scraping going on. Even the glass is scraped. But um, the glass is fine. It's not actually cracked. This is real glass. And thank God it didn't shatter. Right here, I don't know what happened here, but this is bubbled. This is an easy fix, I think. So if you get yours and it's bubbled like that, you just loosen up the screws right here, push down, and that should fix that issue. There we go. So that was an easy fix. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. I'm gonna use my common sense now. Before I actually plug it in, let me go ahead and make sure nothing else is loose. So these cables go to the back glass. Looks like this one too. So one should be for video, one should be for audio. These cable connections look pretty good to me. All these look secure. This is the connection for the main screen, the bottom playfield screen. And this looks like it's fine. So this is not damaged, which is good. Um, down here, let's take a look. Let me go ahead and turn on the light. Well, this connection looks good. And then this connection is loose, see? See how this one is in there, latched down. And then this one looks fine. This one is completely loose. All right, so we're gonna take out the display because I try to put the cable back in, but it's really hard to get in there because I gotta stick my hand all the way. I need two hands basically, that's what I'm trying to say. I can't put both my hands in there. So we're gonna unplug these red wires from the power supply. So I unplugged one so far. And then let me go ahead and unplug the other one. Just grab the sides of it and wiggle. All right, don't pull on the wires because they'll obviously rip out. And next, we're gonna go ahead and grab the connection right here, unplug that. And then we have to undo this connection. This is the ground connection. Don't lose that screw. All right, so now that cable connection is unplugged and the ground cable is unplugged and the backlight wires are unplugged, we should be good to go to take it out. And on the control panel, it's easy to unplug. It's just one connector right there. You pull out and there's a connection right here for the haptic feedback. 
exciters and you just squeeze this and then pull it out. Make sure you don't pull on the wires. Okay, and the glass should slide down and out. This is pretty thick glass actually. Wow, I'm surprised. So the reason why I know it got damaged in shipping is because when you lift this up, it should be attached by screws. See, and it looks like it's busted out. See right here? So you basically would remove these screws to take out the screen. And see that's the little nut that goes in the wood that broke right out. So this one is I believe it was damaged in shipping. I can't imagine the customer doing this damage internally. Yeah, look at that. The screw is completely bent. I'm just gonna grab the bottom and try to unscrew this out. There we go, got it. Oh my God, yeah, <laughs> look at that. out here we go all right so this is the 32 inch screen and let's see if we can fix it this looks like just a cable holder it just holds the connections and this oh that looks like it could be damaged yeah we got a damaged ribbon cable connection I can't really fix that here is the model number if you need it for any reason so all these connections look good I reconnected this cable connection which was fairly easy to connect but that was not the issue at all. I wish it was as simple as just plugging this cable in and getting everything to work. But for some reason this black piece was ripped open and this was torn off in the process, I guess. And this right here looks like it's in good shape going to the LCD screen. This is the buffer board onto the LCD screen. And then this right here, this looks like it's in good shape also. This is completely damaged. See, it should be connected right there. And there's really nothing to do about that. Yeah, there's no way to fix that. So I'm gonna plug it in and see what happens. I mean, it's definitely not going to work without that connection. You're going to miss like probably 25% of the screen is going to be missing. Probably a black bar, a huge black bar, or maybe uh, like colors on the screen or lines or something. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we got. Go ahead and put it back in. And just slide this back up. Right there, right here. And just slide it up. And plug this back in. It should click in and take this cable and we're going to plug it back in here. There we 
go. And see what we got. I didn't really do anything. I just plugged in one cable connection. Yeah, and that's what I figured. We're gonna have a defective screen in the bottom corner or bottom half of the screen is bad. And the game board is fine, so it should technically still play fine, but you can't see it. So if you got a new screen it would definitely fix the issue because the game board is fully functional. Let's test that out. But you just don't have the bottom half of the screen. So the haptic feedback is working. It sounds a little rattly, but that's easy fix with hot glue. So yeah, that's pretty much what I expected is the bottom half of the screen is going to be defective. The top half is fine. And this is unplayable unless you got a new screen. Well, we didn't fix the Legends Pinball, but we did learn a lot about the Legends Pinball. For one, we learned how to troubleshoot. We learned how to remove the screen, remove the glass, remove the control deck. And we also learned about all the connections. I'm gonna go ahead and try to mod this so it has a 32 inch back glass, a new 32 inch screen for the play field. Subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on that video coming out.